Hey everyone, Adam here with another RimWorld guide. I've seen and heard a ton of people asking all over the place, what is wealth, how do you manage wealth, what are raid points, and so on. There's a ton of information and nuances about these subjects and exactly how they work. So in this RimWorld guide, I'm going to focus on two main topics. Firstly, what is wealth management? Why you should do it and how to actually do so. And second, what counts as wealth, what doesn't count as wealth, and how much various things do count. As I mentioned, there's a ton of things to dig into, but I'm going to try to focus on what is most important as well as what is most commonly asked. I'll have a follow-up guide that is more specific to raid points, which I'll mention a lot here. This example base gets raids of about 22 tribal enemies. We can throw out some of the useless items and reduce the size of raids by about 25%. By doing this, five enemies simply would not show up to this raid. Let's go back in time and make that happen. Here's the same base with some things we didn't need thrown away. We still got huge piles of food, medicines, spare weapons, drugs, components, 24 luciferium, and five mortar barrels. All this gone is junk that we would most likely never use or that could easily be acquired again. This is basic wealth management, a tactic that can drastically reduce raid size. In this example, after the Great Purge, the base now only gets attacked by 17 tribals. That's five enemies who are essentially dead without a shot being fired. This example's 25% reduction in raid size would apply on any difficulty. Now let's talk about wealth management. Simply put, wealth management means that if you remove some wealth, then you remove some raiders. In RimWorld, a significant factor in the size of raids is wealth that exists on the map. What exactly is kept and what exactly is tossed is up to you, but the more wealth that is reduced, the greater effect on the size of raids. In this example base, I kept items I thought would be useful in the near future or items that were especially rare. I tossed items that would not be used in the near future. Anything I'd consider selling for silver, I'd also consider throwing away. Silver can always be earned again, which means that even silver can be thrown away in the most dire of times. Here is a list of all the things I got rid of in this example. The methods of wealth management I recommend most are trading and bribery. By trading, you can turn your useless wealth into useful items. I like to call this wealth that can defend itself, or effective wealth. Things like better weapons, better armor, more material for turrets and mortars, better walls and key defensive locations, you get the idea. You can also gift wealth to other factions so that they become allies, allowing you to call them in using the comms console from the microelectronics research for future trade or military assistance. I even recommend intentionally settling near Outlander factions so you can easily trade or bribe them. The Empire from the Royalty DLC also counts as an Outlander faction, however you will need someone of at least the Knight rank to directly trade with them. You can still call them in for military aid, if allied, even without your own Royal though. Early game, bribes and trades can only be accomplished when a trade caravan arrives on your map or if you caravan to another faction. You may not be familiar with forming your own early game caravans and that's alright. Wealth management is the perfect time to learn. To super simplify things, you basically need to acquire a colonist who you wouldn't mind losing if something terrible were to happen, perhaps some random auto join that you would have banished anyway. Then tame a pack animal or three like alpacas or muffalos or, or even more ideally donkeys or horses. Then form a caravan and head out. Worst case scenario is that you lose the entire caravan. Well successfully managed. Best case scenario, you trade for useful items or bribe another faction successfully. The moment the caravan leaves the map is the moment the caravan stops counting for raids on your current map. Generally, the items I recommend to purchase via trading are specialty weapons, consumables, and components. Specialty weapons like smoke launchers, EMP grenades, a sniper rifle, or reinforced mortar barrels create additional combat options, which would otherwise be impossible. Consumables like psychic shock, and insanity lances, low shields, and even go juice can solve problems that may otherwise be incredibly difficult. And as I always say, A, B, C, always buy components. But Adam, I already have 400 components. A, B, C. If you are curious if a town has restocked, you can check by clicking on it and hitting the show what will buy. Other wealth management options involve destroying items. The quickest but most tedious way to destroy wealth is clicking through the caravan's inventory on the world map and having them drop item by item. Grenades can also remove items quickly. 
zone all the items into a pile, and throw molotovs or frag grenades at the pile. This method is especially useful for fresh corpses. One additional trick to this incendiary method is to roof the area so that the auto rain event doesn't spawn and put out the fire before everything is gone. You'll also want to make sure colonists are not zoned to add additional items to the pile or to extinguish the fires. Zoning items outdoors also causes many items to deteriorate away. As the items lose hit points, they quickly lose their value as well. Zoning these in water will increase the speed at which they deteriorate. You can see more details about this in my guide on tainted clothing. I also wanted to take some time to talk about Wealth Bloat. Instead of having to cull your wealth every so often, you can implement methods in which you simply gain less wealth in the first place. A common example is storing thousands of food. Having food storage for a bad event is a good thing, but having 6,000 rice stored away for three colonists is doing way more harm than it is helping. Even worse would be processing that 6,000 rice into meals and storing those meals. This is one of the most common things I see when tuning into others' RimWorld content. I plan on putting out a food production guide that will cover this in much more detail, so if curious about the specifics, please check out that video as well. Remember that virtually everything in RimWorld increases in value as it is processed. The meals are worth more than the ingredients. Store enough food so you can survive toxic fallouts, which can now only last around 11 maximum days, unlike the early days of the game. Don't store multiple years of food at once. The concept of only store what you need applies to all items. Common mistakes are mining all the resources available on your map immediately. Instead, store a bit and mine the rest when needed. Likewise, set jobs such as cutting stone blocks to do until X, rather than having thousands of cut stone lying around, causing raids to be larger and deadlier. That's right, just having more bricks laying around will make more raiders want to kill you. If you have a butchering empire, you may be radically increasing wealth through meat and leather all the time. Then processing these two into meals and clothes can create even more wealth that's only stored and not being used. A drug empire is the same concept. Be careful of storing excess plants or even worse, completed drugs. Those are all fine ways to play the game, but try to regularly remove those goods ideally trading them for wealth that can defend itself or to make more allies. Overbuilding can also be an issue, and that's more than simply don't make everything out of gold. The most common example is in a mountain base and smoothing everything everywhere. Perhaps consider not smoothing the floors in the stockpile rooms and hallways that are not frequently used. A small addition to this I will mention ties in with other production in general. If you are keeping 20 times more food than you need, that also equates into a larger storage area than you need, more coolers than you need, more electricity being produced than you need, and all of this adds to wealth. It can get out of hand pretty quickly. Having said all of this, I want to be clear that absolutely maximizing wealth management is not mandatory. You should play in the way you find most fun and adjust the settings appropriately. I tend to be somewhat overzealous, especially early game, about my wealth management due to the extreme difficulties I choose to play on. Alright, so what counts as wealth? Well, generally what counts as wealth is anything visible on the map that is not controlled by another faction, though there are a few exceptions to this. The number I recommend using for wealth management is Colony Wealth, located by clicking the History button, looks like a book, and then the Statistics tab. This number is easy to check while playing the game normally. There are no specific points of wealth to keep in mind when considering threats and raids. Colony wealth does affect mood through expectations, however. Just remember simply that more wealth means bigger threats. Colony wealth is the number I recommend watching, but it isn't perfectly accurate as not all wealth is created equal in terms of raid size. The two main exceptions to colony wealth are that firstly, all buildings are counted at half their market value, and second, all buildings are counted as if they had full hit points. I call this other number Storyteller Wealth. Storyteller Wealth is only visible via development mode. We tested a lot of crazy scenarios using the Storyteller Wealth number to see what truly counts. Also, RimWorld doesn't calculate wealth continuously, so after changing something, I had to give it a moment for RimWorld to update. Please test these scenarios and tons of other scenarios, whatever you can think of. And if you find anything interesting, please share in the comments. I'd love to see what you find. 
All right, here's some rapid fire of what we've discovered so far. Visible starting walls, doors, columns, floors, tables, etc. all count. If they are not visible, they don't count. Destructible ancient things don't count. Stone tile and flagstone roads do count. Bridges count. Asphalt and dirt roads don't count. The walls of an ancient danger don't count until you claim them. As soon as you can see inside the ancient danger, the items immediately count. The floor inside also immediately counts. The walls, tables, columns, sarcophagi, crypto sleep caskets, and other furniture, they don't count until you actually claim them. Stone chunks on your map don't count. Unmined materials don't count. Mined items, however, immediately count. Meteors don't count. Mine them, though, and the resources immediately count. Ship parts don't count until deconstructed, which makes the dropped resources count. Enemy raiders don't count. Anything in their inventory does not count. Once dead, the corpse counts. The tainted clothing, that counts. Anything that drops, that also counts. You just got a mech cluster. None of it counts as wealth. Defeat the mech cluster and the buildings still don't count as wealth. Any items do, however. The walls, unstable power cells, and other buildings don't count until you claim them. For sieges, all the dropped items immediately count. Barricades and mortars don't count until claimed. A trade caravan doesn't count. Anything in their inventory doesn't count. If they die, the corpses count. The tainted clothing counts, and anything they drop counts. Living wild animals do not count, though tamed animals do. Every fresh corpse on the ground counts. Buried corpses still count while they're fresh. Corpses in a transport pod count and they stay fresh forever. Rotten and desiccated corpses don't count. Rotten human corpses don't count, but their tainted clothings on the corpse do count. Met corpses do count. Items like yo-yo count, unforbidden, forbidden, in a stockpile, out of a stockpile, it doesn't matter, it all counts. Whether something is in the home zone, no home zone, it counts. In a pawn's inventory, in a prisoner's inventory, in a slave's inventory, counts. In a guest's inventory, however, it doesn't count. Guest weapons, clothes, and inventory, none of that counts. In a tamed animal's inventory, it counts. In any of those inventories, and in either a crypto sleep casket or a transport pod, it still counts. Huge piles of gold counts, of course, but like with all items, you put that gold on a caravan, as soon as it leaves the map tile, it no longer counts. It is important to remember that the gold and items on the caravan do count for the caravan, so ambushes may be scary. Though you could park the caravan over your settlement to prevent ambushes, sort of like having an offshore banking account at the ready. A full hit point item is worth its market value. A damaged item's market value is significantly reduced. The effectiveness of a weapon isn't impacted by the hit point reduction. So what this means is a charge rifle at 100% hit points is going to do the same damage as a charge rifle at 1% hit point, but it'll be worth a lot less wealth. Tainted clothing's market value is reduced by 90%. Damaged clothing, just like damaged weapons, are still fully effective but have their market value significantly reduced. In both of these cases, you might get mood hits for tattered clothing or tainted apparel, but they are just as effective as the full hit point or untainted version. Any building only counts for half its market value, though many buildings don't list the market value. Significantly damaged buildings still count as if they had full hit points. An uninstalled piece of furniture counts as an item and then counts at full market value. An installed piece of furniture counts as a building and counts as only half market value. A damaged installed piece of furniture counts as a full hit point building, but a damaged uninstalled piece of furniture counts as an item and at the displayed market value. A colonist is worth its displayed market value in its information panel. Upon's clothing, weapons, and inventory do all count towards wealth, but they are not included in the market value number shown on the pawn. Skill levels do impact market value. Health conditions affect market value, including missing limbs. Minor injuries affect market value. 
brain damage affects market value the most. Implants also count at full value, whether installed or not. Side casting levels don't add to your wealth. A prisoner counts for the full market value. Slaves count for only 75% of their listed market value. Floors of any type count as buildings, meaning they only give half wealth as well. Floors hidden by walls, they still count. The walls count as well, of course. Smooth stone floors also count. Smooth stone floors covered by another floor do not count. Only the floor on top counts. If you remove that top floor, then the wealth of the smooth stone underneath comes back. Research levels do not add to your wealth. Commonly made structures like walls, doors, and floors all count as buildings, but don't display a market value. All the numbers displayed are listed in market value. Half all numbers for storyteller wealth. Just remember, don't feel obligated to manage your wealth. You should play RimWorld however you most enjoy it. Wealth management is an effective way to manage the size of raids and have more success on higher difficulties though. It is definitely not a requirement to enjoy or even beat the game. Any way you want to play RimWorld is great. Alternatives to the wealth system in RimWorld include turning down the threat scale and the custom difficulty options, using wealth independent mode, or using mods. Wealth is only the first factor in how RimWorld determines the size of raids. In short, RimWorld looks at your colonist count, your combat animals, the difficulty settings, and what can be called an adaptation factor. I'll be doing a follow-up video that discusses raid points and how all the parts work, so be sure to check that out as well. And that does it. Hopefully this RimWorld guide has helped you to understand wealth in RimWorld, both what it is, where it comes from, and how to manage it effectively. The main takeaways are to be careful what you keep on your map. Turn that wealth bloat into effective wealth by trading or gifting, and to ensure you aren't overproducing. By doing this, you can effectively kill many raiders before they even get to your base. If you enjoyed this RimWorld guide or it helped you out at all, please consider subscribing to the channel, liking the video, leaving a comment down below, and sharing it with others. If you'd like to reference a written version of this guide, be sure to head over to my website at adamverseverything.com slash guides. And as always, thank you for watching.